Hey, I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Give this video a like. We have a podcast in the description as well. Subscribe to that. We are sponsored by Tito's Handmade Vodka. Yep. Based in Austin, Texas, American-made, number one vodka in America, Tito's. We spent a lot of time talking on Sunday night, and I think our comments about Trey Lance wore really well in the last couple of days. Um, we talked about it going back to last Thursday. He got the first team reps Friday. He played some more on Sunday. And we believed by Sunday night, as we talked through it, the quarterback competition was back open or maybe it never closed. So then we've had the whole game to digest. And we also had intrepid reporter Grant Cohn of YouTube fame, uh, among other things, catch the audio uh, press conference of Kyle Shanahan, which he says, I'm just trying to get him better and get him ready for, and then he stops whatever he was about to say and gets to another comment. And then somebody also very sharp in the replies to this tweet from Grant, which is on the screen, uh, posted a video of Trey Lance from the Sunday night post game in which they ask him, does your experience at North Dakota state when you knew you weren't going to be the starter help you? And he says, no, that was different. You know, Easton Stick was going to be the guy, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I guess maybe it is kind of the same. So are Kyle and Trey Lance almost letting us in on a secret that they already know? Or on a most basic level, do they not know what they're doing yet? And that tells us that there still is a chance that Trey Lance is the week one started for the 49ers. My educated guess, starting with the player, he doesn't know. Kyle hasn't told him, you're actually the starter week one. Beside maybe, and he's alluded to this, you're going to play, be ready at any moment. I think in Kyle's mind, and for whatever reason, I know I pivoted, and I am completely back with Haberman, <laughs> that I, I I don't expect him to start week one, but I think it's very, very possible. Like, I, I am not going to be, when Adam Schefter tweets out in a week, Kyle has the trailer going to be a starter for week one, not going to be shocked. I can't wait to talk about it and do a big podcast about it, but I, I think that's a very real possibility. And I think it's fair to say that Kyle has pivoted throughout training camp. Because if you remember, him and John Lynch talked, uh, I think, a day or two before guys re reported. And he was adamant. Jimmy Garoppolo's our starting quarterback, which he'd said all off season. And he, they had said that. Remember, they had hammered it down once they made the trade. They immediately called Jimmy, and they said, listen, you're still the starting quarterback. You know, I, they were just trying to be nice to him. But I, they, they, their story has stayed consistently straight. Kyle has pivoted because when Matt Mayoko asked him, like, is Jimmy Garoppolo your starting quarterback? He wouldn't answer the question, which, again, is basically because I think he realizes, what am I waiting for? That, to me, is the question. What am I tell I you, I'll answer for? the question. He's waiting to believe that Trey Lance can do enough. He's waiting to believe that Trey Lance can do enough. Um to trust him. That's what he's waiting for. Because he already knows what Jimmy Garoppolo gives him. And what Jimmy Garoppolo gives him is not total safety or total confidence. It's a roller coaster ride, guy. It's, he's a roller yes, coaster ride. Yes. <laughs> you are not getting Alex Smith. I've said it for a long time, and now I've been hammering it for four days. Don't believe the lie that this is just about Jimmy's injury history, because it's not. It's about they traded up to try and get a top five quarterback. So the question is that Kyle Shanahan asked once upon a time about Jimmy Garoppolo. Is this guy good? You know, is this guy top five? Maybe he already knew the answer when he got him, but we know the answer that's no. So the question now is not, is Trey Lance a top five quarterback? The question for right now, week one of the NFL season is, can I trust Trey Lance enough to put him out there and hopefully gain back some of what I give up when I have him on the field? Well, I, I was actually thinking about this today when I was uh, pumping a little iron at the gym. It crossed my mind that in 2019, when Jimmy was having, and the, the team was having a good season, and, and Jimmy, for the most part, played well. And one talking point that, you know, we have obviously talked a lot of Raiders historically, was that Jimmy Garoppolo, I would rather have the 2019 Jimmy Garoppolo than the 2019 Derek Carr. And then last year, it kind of pivoted. And things change. Like the NFL players having just been in there and just watching how we evaluate and give grades, it's it's very fluid. It, it really is. A player is like a stock market. One day it's up, one day it's down. Now, your best players, right, your, I don't know, uh, Jalen Ramsey or DK Metcalf or just Patrick Mahomes, 
they are always feel like they trend up for a decade. A lot of players, though, go up and down. And the moment you start consistently going down or just plateauing, that means you're getting worse. Like, Jimmy didn't get any better. He's just the same guy that he was three years ago. And maybe it's just as simple as, well, that's ultimately why he was a late second-round pick. He has some physical limitations. I, I don't know. But for whatever reason, he just is the same guy. And when you stay the same – and, like, Derek, I think, has really improved. Just like Kirk Cousins has improved. If you do not improve in the NFL, you actively – it sounds great – you get worse because you get past. And the moment you get past, and also – Every year in the sport, at definitely other positions, not as much at quarterback, but you get new players in. So if like I'm a defensive lineman and I've just stayed the same for a couple years ago, eventually I'm going to get fucked because they're just going to draft two or three guys over a couple years span, and one of those guys is going to eventually beat me out if I don't keep maintaining my talent and my yeah, ability. And also there's a financial element, right? John, let's tell the people about DraftKings. Download the app, use the promo code HAM. And try the instant win challenge from DraftKings Wild Cards. You're shot at up to $50 million in prizes. What about our friends at Manscaped.com? The best ball trimmer on the market. Promo code HAM gets you 20% off and free shipping. You start hanging Once around, you become you get more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's it. But- and you become cuttable with a contract, which there are elements to Jimmy like, I'm not saying you should do this, but he is cuttable for free. They can cut him for nothing. I'm not. I'm not. Ad, I would keep them. We've talked about that, and I'm sure we'll get into that if that becomes a legit discussion. But if they want to, they can get rid of twenty five million dollars like that. Yeah. Right? Well, no court, no backup is worth twenty five million dollars. But there is a value that he has, and so if the value is paying nothing or paying twenty five million dollars, you might end up overpaying to have something than not paying anything to have Nate Sudfeld be your backup quarterback, right? Yes. I, I think this is a. Th- this summarizes it very well. I think YouTube comment from Sway. I don't think Shanahan is waiting to believe in Lance. He is confirming his disbelief in Garoppolo. He, he knows he, right now at this point in time, there is a difference between the, like Garoppolo has advantages over Trey Lance. Yeah. How would he have belief in Lance beside just the guy and the physical tools, right? Cause he's never seen him play games. Part of the belief in Lance has to be the belief in himself. Like I can put this guy in enough good spots that the mistakes that he will inevitably make, we can overcome. Wouldn't you say it's probably 80-20 that right now, given that he has, has zero resume in, in real games against real game plans and just how he'll handle getting hit and just you just there's unknown. There just is. You know, if he had just played Zach Wilson season, maybe it'd be a little now obviously Zach's in a different situation with the Jets. But Trey Lance hasn't I, I I this was what Sunday was made it so crystal clear to me. The guy needs to be playing football games. The guy needs to be playing, he needs to be playing, he needs to be playing. Because practicing doesn't help him in the moments when his footwork goes wonky. And so, like Shanahan said, the reason he starts throwing these fastballs is because his footwork's off. Remember, they spent all this time talking about, and Mike McDaniel said it a few weeks ago, your footwork, it's all tied to your footwork. Your footwork, your footwork, your footwork. Shanahan said it too. And that's are, are, you, are you expecting a tweet in the next seven days from Adam Schefter that Trey Lance has been named the starting quarterback? Uh, I kind of am, yeah. Because there's probably not anything Jimmy can do like this week. What's going to change that? It's already in his mind. You, you well, and I have been in situ- professional situations. When you get it made up in your mind, you just start looking for reasons. Like the, it, It's rare that you just like, oh, let's flip a Yui and go back to where we once well, were. That's not going to happen. We agree on that. Shanahan does not know what he's going to do right well, now. Well, I just don't think he's confident enough yet to pull the trigger slash knows he doesn't need to do it Put yet. it this way. He has not named Jimmy the starter in his head. Fuck no. But but I also think he knows, let's say he, he's like 80-20 going with Trey. It it doesn't behoove him to do that on August 24th. But I just also, think with the team and just you got some other stuff to figure out. You got three weeks away from week one. You do have some time. We also have another game. Like we, we talked about this last week before they played the Chargers. They, he'd only played one game. There was two more games in the course of seven days, but it's two more games. So now he played Sunday night. I was got another game to play. Like I think this game, like these, like there's a reason Trey Lance kept playing on Sunday, because these yeah. games matter to his how he plays matters to Kyle. I've he shifted traded up dramat- to three. He I've wants him to work. <laughs> the more I think about it, I'll be a little surprised if an Adam Schefter tweet comes out. Kyle has told the team Jimmy Garoppolo starting week one. That that actually will surprise me at this point. After watching Kyle's mannerisms Sunday night listening to the audio on Monday, and just kind of going back to think big picture. Steve Young summarized it. 
Then Steve Young stopped talking and Adam Schefter and Steve called him out on it. He's like, Adam, you're acting like you don't know. I know, you know, because Adam's like, well, they haven't decided. They're just letting it all play out and taking in all the information. And that's what they were going to do from the jump. It's just easier. I think it's the right football move to quell the craziness of not doing a quarterback competition, but actually kind of doing one. You know, because if you come out and say Pete Carroll style, maybe you do it when you're just you haven't accomplished anything. But if you're kind of like, I don't even want to deal with this. I, I can just do it on my own. I don't need to be like, it's a quarterback competition every two they're repping. It's like think of the circus. It already is a circus. I would say that would go 10x on just the craziness. Yeah, and also if you're going to end up with Garoppolo, it doesn't really help Garoppolo to make him win the job. You can just make him the starter, and then you can give Lance the job. There's no, there's no rule. You're in charge, is right? Yeah, you, and get, I, you I, get to do whatever you want. Yeah, I, I think once well, you, they made the move, I, I think they looked as Jimmy, and this is the sad. Sad would be strong. He's made a shitload of money with the Niners. They're using him as a pawn. I mean, if they will, because I don't think it's inconceivable that they cut him. I would say that would, but how that is he would a be pawn? a little shocking. Well, just because if he gets it, great. If he doesn't, we'll cut his ass. We'll ask him to take a $15 million pay cut. Like, they're just using him. Like, it's just they don't give yeah. a shit. Like, they're not. They're, they the moment they made the trade. $25 million because they like him? Yeah, but they, are no, but they are no longer, like, invested in his really, in a weird way, like his success. No, the second you trade up to three, you've moved on eventually. Yeah. And now it's about your goals and our goals are the same for different reasons. You want to extend your career and prove to somebody else you can still win, and we just want you to be good enough to help us win. But that's just until we're ready to put Trey Lance in. Yeah. Uh, here's a question: Would people be disappointed if Lance was a more athletic Tannehill? Yes. Uh, yes, I think so. Would you be disappointed, or is well, Tannehill I over time going to? I, I would say the problem with that analogy— And that question if, comes from Jesse, by the way. If Ryan Tannehill had been the quarterback his entire time on the Titans, I think we would view him differently. I think, I think he's view, he's rooted through a Miami lens that's where people question, question it. That is, that is a good question. But if, but here's the thing. I'll go back to this. Is he a top-five quarterback, or does he have a chance to be a top-five quarterback? Just in the realm. Wait, say that again. Sorry. Does Ryan Tannehill have the chance to be, forget about top five, top eight, top nine quarterback? It feels like kind of his peak. Because Kyle Shanahan wants a top five quarterback. He didn't trade up, a, he didn't trade a bunch of picks to get up to three to get a guy who might be top 10 sometimes. Like, for example, he wants a top five quarterback. That's what he's, he's said that. Ryan, 16 starts, 16 games, 33 touchdowns, seven picks. I know. At 65%. The I previous know. year, he had only started 10 games. Probably on pace for, you know, a 38-9 season at a much higher completion percentage. Yeah, you know how old he is? Probably younger than you think. No, nah, probably older than you think. <laughs> 33? Yeah. I, so he's older than Russell Wilson. Well, you know Cam's 32? He feels like he's 39. <laughs> I, yeah, I would have guessed 35. Yeah, I, Cam and Russell are the same age. I guess all these guys are the same. Question, Jesse. So what's, what's Andrew Luck now like? 32, 33, yeah, probably y young enough to <laughs> be in his prime. So, but the, like the game this week matters and it doesn't just matter for it, part of this is part of the reason we're here is because Garoppolo hasn't been great, but again, who expected it? Like this is, we've seen the evidence he's played in the games. You're not going to get great often. You'll get it a couple times. He has been great in games before, but consistently great. Yeah, I, to really me, the, good. I, whatever. Yeah, I would throw. I would throw away the great How, word. Is he even a good? Do you feel good? Is he a good quarterback? I think he's a good quarterback. Yeah. Is he a really good quarterback? I don't think so, because he's not consistently better. He, he's not consistently better than he. His good is not consistently much better than his bad. Yeah, I think he's good. I I think he's there is a category of quarterback. There are two categories of quarterbacks ahead of him. Then there's his category, and then there's like guys that. Yeah, some shitty guys in the 20s. But he again, he's closer to probably 20 than he is 10 at right now. He's probably like 18, 19, 20 range. Yeah. Where I think they, they were hoping, maybe they never believed he would be a top five-ish guy, but if he could just huddle around top 10, they'd be in good shape. I think they view it, back to what my original point about getting better or getting worse, 
he even if he stayed the same, he's actually regressed because other guys have like come into the league. Guys, Josh Allen got good. Lamar Jackson, right? Baker's now good. Like you just you get past. It's it's to me what makes the NFL so fucking pure is is and it relates so much society is like if you're not good enough, you just get thrown to the. There aren't scholarships. There's not like these seven year contracts in baseball and basketball. You're like God, we would have cut this guy three years in football. Even the Dominican Sue, you signed this huge deal two years in. The Dolphins were like, yeah, we're cutting him next year. <laughs> you know, it just – it happened so fast. And Jimmy's contract is very just – he's not tied to anybody anymore. That's – like you said, it, it is dependent on your contract. And most guys in the NFL do not have conducive contracts for safety, right? Financial safety. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, this is not an ad, but in my bookie right now, still the favorite to win the Rookie of the Year offensive is Trevor Lawrence, uh, then Trey Lance, then Justin Fields, then Mac, jo- uh, then Kyle Pitts, then Mac Jones. Um, you know, he is better set up for success right now, Trey Lance is, based on the players around him, than Justin Fields is, than Zach Wilson is, than Trevor Lawrence is. Mac Jones might be himself more ready for success, but he doesn't have better players around him than Trey Lance does, right? Like, if you're thinking about the rookies who can play right now, and the guys that are, like several of them are going to play right now, Trey Lance is better set up to succeed than any. Now he's played less football games than all of them, too. But in terms of what's around him. Yeah. Right? I The field, if Fields comes in, though, and they start winning, he'll be viewed more as a savior than, than Trey would be viewed as, I would, I would imagine. I would say yes. Fields has the opportunity that if he comes in and lights the world on fire to have a lot of momentum on his side. Where Trey, I think Kyle will take some of the credit. The defense will take some of the credit. The running game will take and some of the credit. They might ask him to do a little less than Justin. Justin is just going to spin out and take <laughs> off. Yeah, and just run for his life. Um, I mean, what do you think Kyle's think? What do you think Kyle would be thinking sitting on his couch? Not, I don't know if uh, he sits on his couch, but yeah, I don't think in his that. office. <laughs> Watching other, te- uh, watching these other guys. Well, I, how does that not put a little pressure on him to play Trey Lance? Just based on Zach Wilson and Trevor Lawrence are going to play. We've known that. But Cam Corona, who knows? And clearly the Patriots immediately leaked out. They're not happy. And someone was quoted as like, now this opens up the door for Mac Jones. What if Mac Jones is the week one starter? So then three of the five guys are starting. We know you know, Kyle watches these games, just offenses around the league. Then all of a sudden, Mac Jones. What if Mac Jones is good for the Patriots guy? You don't think Kyle's going to be like, want to show off his toy? Especially if, assuming that he goes with Jimmy, which we are just kind of said feels kind of unlikely at this point in time. <laughs> uh, I don't know if Kyle feels the pressure watching those guys. Uh, you know, he has the experience in his pocket of having succeeded with a rookie quarterback. Like, he, he has done that. So it would not be uncharted territory for him, you know? Like, he did it with RG3. And he believes in RG3, I think, less than he believes in Trey Lance. Yeah, but RG3 was more ready to just do what they did with him. Like, he, he had played a lot in college, had I'm won the Heisman. Kyle sitting at his desk has done – he has been through this before. Maybe he didn't love that experience. Maybe that's why he – you know, it's possible that he looks back and goes like, God, we yeah, we won – we went to the playoffs with OG three. If we had had a veteran quarterback, we could have been so much better. Maybe he thinks that. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't part of it, of it like, that way before. I think Mike sent him out to what's his name at uh, the little general in Nevada, and he kind of learned some Result. of the pistol run game stuff and implemented that stuff for RG three. I I don't know if it was didn't enjoy it because how how can you not enjoy winning? I think it more became they're so scarred from the human. Because the big part of it, remember, was immediately then his dad was like, fucking run a normal offense for my son. They're like, holy shit, calm down, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> and that I think I feel like RG3, the experience scarred him more than that. Because I do think it gets talked about sometimes. They had to run like this collegiate offense, even though a lot of teams kind of run it now. And the Niners, when you've been a, we've been in practice, they have elements of it. Yeah, but, right? I, but we – yeah. Yeah, it's true, but I'm just saying we give him we look at that experience as like evidence that he should be able to play a rookie quarterback right away. But I wonder if he looks at that experience and says, if I'd had a better, more prepared quarterback, I could have won more games. But they won the division. Well, I know. But he might look back and go, We could have been better if I didn't have to run a training wheels offense. Why well, I think the question mark big picture 
is always going to be back on that individual situation. Remember, he tore his knee up in a in the in the playoff game against Seattle. It was pouring rain. Yep. If RG three never gets hurt, who is he? A little who knows? It, it probably still gets weird. But I I do believe that like that showed to me his adaptability immediately. Which any good coach, like the point of being a coach, is not. Like if one guy does something really well and it's not in quote unquote your playbook or on your whiteboard, if you can't throw in a couple plays for what he does well, and I think Kyle does a good job. Like Debo Samuel clearly is pretty good at the end around, right? And he's comfortable doing it. He fucking hits the hole hard. Like they run the shit out of that play. Like he does run plays for his guys that they excel at. But any good offensive coach, to me, worth their salt should be doing that. 